Hello everyone, welcome to another SSCAIT report. I will be your host, Chobo Swaggins, aka Jealous from TL. Today we will have an interesting mix of games coming from various sources in the AI world, and I will finally have an opportunity to share that special surprise I hinted at last time I commentated. Without further ado, let's jump into the first game. Here at the bottom right we have Locutus, the white Protoss, and at the bottom left we have Stardust as the purple Protoss. Now the reason I chose this game uh, is because both of these bots are from the same author. Locutus historically has been a very strong AI, and Stardust, as you may well be aware from our previous broadcasts, is currently the front runner of many, many of the ladders and tournaments that have been happening over the past few months. So I thought it would be interesting to see how the two brothers match up since Stardust and Locutus do share a lot in common. Uh, Stardust, however, being of course more famous for its very Dragoon heavy play, uh, often going four gateways in all three matchups. Uh, well, four if you count, count random as well. And it seems like Locutus will be the first to scout its opponent uh, going in the clockwise direction while Stardust is going to go the long ways. It will be interesting to see if it changes its scouting pattern depending on whether when it sees the white probe. And let's speed it up a little bit just to get through this early stage of the game. So let's see how this probe moves now that it knows where the opponent could be. No such thing. And we have a stolen gas already from Locutus here. Interesting choice. Meanwhile, Locutus getting its own gas. And it has the gateway up quite significantly earlier than Stardust. It's going to be interesting to see how Stardust handles this situation where it can't go gas into Dragoons quite so quickly. Uh, and we already see the Cybernetics Corp from Locutus as well. I'm interested to see where the money is being spent by Stardust here. Does it, does it seem to you like maybe it bugged out a little bit? I love this uh, ramp blocking probe, by the way. It's very hard, hard to deal with, and it sets up for the potential for some very aggressive play. And here we have looks like Citadel is up on the way and yeah it looks like actually the bot did just <laughs> it got completely confuzzled by the fact that there was the presence of the assimilator here so I think it's a bygone conclusion of what is going to happen here and Stardust is going to fall to its older brother Locutus here uh, based on the Dark Templar uh, attack that will come in. and actually we have a forge now but looking at the minerals it's too little too late Yes, and that would be the end of the game here. I'm sorry for such a, an unexpected turn of events. Uh, unfortunately, when we look at the score, like we can determine some things. I determined the fact that Stardust did mine a lot of minerals, but it got completely outclassed. I just didn't know what the reason was. So something that's interesting uh, that happened <laughs> because of a stolen gas, I believe that might have just thrown Stardust way off center and definitely an exploit that other AI may use to take it take it down. Moving onward, <laughs> we have a game from the Schnell Ladder. And here we have a higher ranked uh, Protoss player. Uh, this is the human player as the brown Protoss. And we have the anonymous AI, but I'll tell you right now that it is in fact a Diaz, one of the top performing Terran AIs in the ladder right now. And it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, this Protoss player, I know them quite well. It's, I'll be honest, it's actually me, okay? <laughs> By higher ranked, I'm referring, of course, to the LO rankings that uh, exist on Schnell. We can't see other human players, but uh, I know that for a fact that I am pretty high up on the leaderboards right now, uh, despite taking some serious losses. So in this game, I chose to go for a somewhat standard approach. Uh, I decided to see just what the AI is capable of because the AI gets stronger and stronger as time goes on. They're, some of them are not that great at handling early game variants, uh, especially cheeses that involve reaver drops. Uh, but I decided to pit my macro against the AI's macro here and see what comes out of it. So we have, looks like, the anonymous AI idea scouted its whole base looking for proxies and now is going to go out and scout the opponent, which is a very interesting choice. Meanwhile, the Protoss player is going for a Zealot first against the AI. The AI is going for a nice marine wall here, protecting its gas. Only one, only there was, looks like a very clean build here, given how it's putting SCVs on and off gas, going for this factory here. 
SCV does manage to scout and it sees the Zealot coming out, it sees the Cybernetics Core coming up a little bit late. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. It looks like it's going for a Bunker Expander. And actually we already have a Zealot coming in. And this SCV is going to get taken down. This is how Adias has struggled to fight in the past. But look at this Marine Control here. Another SCV goes down, but lots of hits have been already planted on the Dragoon. And look at this Micro here. I wanted to really highlight this for uh, our viewers. And this is why I chose this game. It's to, sh to demonstrate just how powerful the control can be from the AI. Unfortunately, it did pull an SCV that has gas on it. And now, look, pulling away the injured, uh, injured SCVs does lose one, but it has completely befuddled these Zealots, surrounded them with the SCVs, and it doesn't even lose another one. So two Zealots down, not a single Marine lost, and uh, the Vulture is still in good health. Only a couple SCVs lost, and now the Protoss is in somewhat of a dire position. Uh, I mean, it only has one Dragoon. It did take a Nexus, but it didn't do any damage with its first two uh, Zealots. The Anonymous AI choosing not to run in, opting instead to save the health on its Vulture, and now the AI is going to start its own command center as well. So very quick and decisive response from the AI to the early Zealot pressure, very nicely done here. And looking at what it's going to be following up with, I see that it's actually not using its factory for anything, now it finally is adding that siege tank, so it's quite an interesting decision here. It already has one, uh, it definitely is not under any threat from this kind of pressure here. Uh, repairs to the bunker would be able to keep it alive, and as we see already, the SCVs are already here in position to make those repairs. The Vulture keeping an eye on the Protoss player, uh, making sure that they don't leave their base willy-nilly. Uh, and the Protoss player in the meantime looks like to be, is going to be a standard follow-up with a Robo and Observatory, trying to keep a tab on what the Terran player does. The Terran player on their own behalf adding the Engineering Bay and going, going to make sure that they don't get surprised by any DT tech or anything of that nature. Meanwhile, the Protoss is already thinking about taking its third base. As I mentioned before, I was considering pushing this game into a macro type game and it looks like it is adding an academy for extra detection, uh, possibly for a marine medic play, uh, although it would be a little bit delayed at this point, and adding another factory as well. Uh, the AI Dragon is actually the one that is most uh, popular uh, for using its M&M &M play. Uh, Adia is not quite known for it and now with the first observer out and about 12 Dragoons, the Protoss player moves out finishes up its wall in the natural and is going to slowly but surely make its way to the Terran trying to contain it while taking more bases of its own. Now, the Vulture is retreating. Another one get, does get sent out, so these two Vultures, I love this move from the Terran, they are basically just going to be pirates raiding the various areas of the map, making sure the Protoss does not just send probes and take over the entire map. Uh, the, Pro, the Protoss in the meantime is going to pommel down this engineering bay. It was an interesting choice to unseach here. Maybe it was just a little bit of unlucky timing. Uh, just out of range of the siege tanks at the moment. And the Protoss is doing a soft contain here as the Terran player adds the star star Starport <laughs> star and keeps adding factories as well, getting its plus one on the way as well. Uh, the third base has been started for the uh, Brown Protoss. The blue vultures looks like they did take out that probe and they have laid some mines as well to stab to make sure that no more uh, free expansions come up on that side of the map the tanks are kind of running around they're not looks like they're not quite ready yet to move out uh, but now they now that the barracks has been lifted they're going to start using this wall here to protect one of their flanks and they are going to start pushing to that third base uh, interestingly enough, they don't uh, mine out this mineral here either, at least not yet. It looks like it's slowly but surely pushing out to take this uh, third base. And <clears throat> this is quite a s solid formation and a really good example of how the AI can use siege tank pushes uh, to, to its advantage here. Unfortunately, slightly out of range of protecting this area. Uh, the Protoss player seemingly unaware that the command center has started here because this would have been an opportune moment to run over here and deny it. Uh, some Dragoons here, some Dragoons here, preventing Vulture run bys from coming in any particular direction. Uh, making sure, <laughs> nice dancing here, making sure that nothing gets by and surprises them in the back of the economy. And so far it seems like the Protoss player is kind of lax in producing the Arbiters that it needs for uh, its aggression. It looks like with the shuttle and the speed loss out, it's going to go for an early push to dismantle the this siege tank position. And being kind of sloppy, showing the humanity of StarCraft, slow reactions to being siege tanked here. Uh, Still managing to control this area here to prevent vultures from coming out. 
and the third command center is still healthily going up as the siege tank production is continuing as well. Uh, only four factories, uh, looks like maybe going up to five uh, against the uh, soon to be um, eight gates of the Protoss player, so a decent ratio, uh, kind of one that you would expect to see, but the Protoss player showing its humanity again, already floating minerals and gas excessively, and in, maybe because it is already thinking about going for that bust soon. Look at the mine coverage here and the patrolling vultures. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for any army to get past this kind of defense position, and it moves its SCVs around not letting them get glitched behind here, showing another example of force. Actually, it looks like maybe one of them, or maybe this one's gonna start mining this mineral. Yes, it is. Great coding for this map in particular that has some definite obstacles to it. Uh, looks like the Protoss player is going to be getting ready to make its frontal assault and try to bust this position in order to prevent the Terran player from taking that macro lead. And we already see here the mine uh, annoying the probe and not letting it place the nexus here uh, and it's time to see what happens here in this engagement uh, looks like the Protoss player is making its move Dragoons are coming up from one side from the other side a three-way flank is arriving here Zealots on move command running through the minefields clear them out quite nicely the Terran however still has a wealth of siege tanks here the Zealots getting on top of them and the siege tank count is all is decimated at this point very few left but not much uh, army left for the Protoss as well even if it takes down these siege tanks it's not going to be able to make much of a difference and these siege tanks on the high ground worth their weight in gold during this engagement taking down all of these Dragoons here and suddenly despite lowering the army count of the Terran, Pro Terran look at how many minerals it has and what its production is and how late the reinforcements are from the Protoss demonstrating the difference between human players and AI. The mine drag here somehow does not kill all the siege tanks here and even though the siege tanks are going to go down the base is going to stay up and the Protoss has effectively traded its whole entire army for the siege tanks that the blue Terran has and however as I said before the production from the AI clearly greater than its human counterpart. Uh, quite a shame to say so myself and this position is going to hold is going to be re-established and now with science vessels and continuing upgrades the Protoss must be feeling the lack of uh, tech here no starport yet and look at these drops here very interesting play from the AI it's targeting the probes even despite the fact that there's army and cannons here great heads up play from the AI and Look at the path that is chosen, this circuitous path that that you know made it unclear which base it's going to drop because it has so many viable drop locations like behind this base, it could have dropped here, it could have dropped here. All of them would have been painful for our human player here. And the human player is finally taking the fourth base, but with drops now in play, it's going to be very difficult to keep all of these locations secured from harassment. And look at this wealth of uh, vultures now. The Protoss still ahead in supply, but only marginally so. This is not the kind of supply difference that the Protoss would like to see at this point of the game, especially not when it's running into mines like this. And the supply difference has now shifted into Terran's favor with its production. Look at how many factories it has. It is up to now two, six, nine factories, optimal count for three bases. And it, well, actually, even a factory back here, quite interesting, maybe even two factories. And another bust attempt is coming front, but there's absolutely not enough here to take down this kind of army. Uh, Zell is being dropped on top of mines, on top of siege tanks, and no, that's it. The Dragoons running through the siege tank area of effect, and unfortunately they will not be able to do much here. The supply difference now firmly in Terran's favor, which is a position that you never want to be in as Terran, I mean as Protoss, and the Terran immediately recognizing the advantage it has after that failed attack is now going to push towards the Protoss player. The Protoss player still does not have any Stargate for carriers or Arbiters. It does have a fairly healthy gateway count, but now that Terran is up to nine gateways, I mean nine factories, ten gateways is not going to be able to cut it, and the mineral count is actually quite low as well. It's not able to reproduce this main base almost mined out. The probes are going to potentially get trapped in here, and now look at this push position from the Blue Terran. Again, hugging the wall, 
and not even actually capable of shooting over the wall to take out this pylon and the gateways that it supports. And this very dragoon heavy army from the Protoss player is not going to be able to do much against this count of siege tanks and the amount of meat shield that it has. Trying to split its forces, waiting for maybe energy on the Templar as well. In the meantime, we had a drop here actually i'm sorry that i missed that i'll go back to that later the probes had to be the ones taking it out and at the same time a push is coming forward at the same time it's taking its fifth ba fourth base emp landed on some of the army here as well uh causing them to lose their shields unfortunately they did not hit the templar but still there's no storm yet and this push is officially in a troubling position for the uh Protoss player the templar are coming forward is there going to be a storm no it's, it's the, the templar go down without ca casting any storm, and this must be the last hurrah for the Rodas player, aka me. And look at that gl blue goon soup. So many Dragoons go down. This position so difficult to break uh, for the Rodas player, and now ho hopelessly transferring probes going around the back to try to somehow spread out, and we see another drop now, taking out so many probes here in the back. Where is this drop going to go? Oh, whoa, that... <laughs> that it just disappeared there. I guess maybe it died, didn't have the time for a death animation. But, and that is the GG from the Protoss player as it notices that this tank has taken out all of its economy at the fourth base. And I do want to go back to this moment here. The, looks like the Dragoons were aware that there's going to be a drop coming in, maybe? No, yeah, it missed the drop. Oh no, this is the second drop, that, this is the first drop that we saw. Oh look at this, this is so cute. Following up the drop with also by laying mines by the vultures to prevent the, to make the drop defense more difficult, but I'm more interested in seeing the second drop. It happens shortly after the, oh, here we go. Oh, did I go back too far? Alright. This dropship's coming back. Is this the dropship that did it? I thought that would, there, there would be a second drop, but maybe. Let's speed it up a little bit. I'm going to keep an eye on this spot. Just to show you guys that while the Terran is pushing, you see it's already making movements out on the map. It's going to come back. What the, oh, what? Oh, what? No? No. Alright, hold on a second. This drop is going to get here, I know for a fact, because I played this game and I saw the probes later. Here it is, it's coming in now. Look at this. Drops two vultures, one of them to the, was called hold off the cannon fire to keep it alive, and the sec the siege tank was dropped in a place where it could attack the probes and the cannon, and at, it was doing this while pushing. So now I believe you can see how difficult it is to fight against an AI of this caliber late into the game, especially given that it, it's, it has its insane macro. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing your commentator get wrecked here. Uh, I believe that was a good example of Adia's strength. Um, and now we're going to go to what I was going to show last time as the surprise. So before we get into it, I do want to give some context. Uh, this is a competition that I spoke about a couple months ago when it was uh, becoming uh, coming up. Uh, it has now completed a few weeks ago. Um, it's called the COG, uh, StarCraft AI Competition. It happened, I believe it's run in Korea, uh, at Gwangju Institute of Science and Technology. And uh, the, these are the results. You can go check out the page and see them for yourself. Quite interestingly, they have all of the replays from all of the AIs uh, here available for download. As you see, I downloaded Stardust. And that should give you an indicate what we will be doing, uh, indication of what we will be doing next. Uh, Stardust did place first uh, in this competition with a win rate of 87.61 quite impressive uh, and you can also see the detailed results uh, that those are available in the page I showed before you can see how each AI fared against each other some different statistics about it and you can also see detailed game results uh, in something like this now what I did with this is to examine something that very rarely happens in human play uh, it is it was always a sensation whenever it happened during the Kespel Leagues. It's when two AI, they have a draw situation. I'm sorry, two humans, sorry. They have a draw situation, a stalemate. It happens very infrequently. The so Some of the scenarios in which it happens is if uh, one person is left with a pylon and cannon and a bunch of probes defending it and the other AI has, I'm sorry, the other person, Jesus, <laughs> has a uh, 
one DT and one building or something. So the DT can't leave its building because the probes would kill it, and the DT can't kill the cannon because the probes are defending it, and there's enough to kill the DT before it takes down the cannon. So I've seen a game of, like, of that nature. There's also the infamous Jang B versus Flash game on Blue Storm where there was just a stalemate where it was disadvantageous for both players to break the stalemate. Jang B was positioned right here. Uh, holding the line with a monstrous Protoss army and Flash was over here with a Terran army and neither could budge to do anything about the other. That is the nature of this map uh, and that's the map that we have here. So I want, thought that would be interesting to see how do AI get into stalemate situations. Uh, what do those games look like? And I believe it's something that we haven't seen yet on this channel or at least haven't seen for a very long time. Uh, so without further ado, here is Stardust at the bottom left as the orange Protoss, and we have Xiao Yi as the purple Terran at the top right. Now, as I explained, uh, we already know the outcome of this game. It's going to be a stalemate. The question is, how do we arrive at that point? Xiao Yi looks like it's scouted its front to make sure that there was no probe coming in to place a proxy. The probe actually running around, which is interesting, while uh, Xiao Yi goes through the direct path. Is going to see that there is nothing really fishy about at the moment. Cybernetic core and gas coming up for the orange Protoss, while the uh, orange Protoss is going to see that there's nothing quite fishy from Xiao Yu as well. Uh, two depots before factory means that there is going to be some marine production, which is important on a rampless map like this. And Xiao Yu actually sending its first marine forward. I've seen some AI do this, they apply pressure uh, to um, give themselves some breathing room so that. While the even though the units are likely to die out at the front, uh, they are enough to harass and uh, keep the opponent busy for a while. But we do see two gateways from Stardust. Looks like I believe it was 1021 gate or something similar. And the Protoss player is actually not opting to get range yet. Looks like it's going for Dragoon count uh, first. As we know, Stardust is famous for its four gate Dragoons, and now we have two gate Dragoons with range on the way. It's going to be interesting to see how this fares on this map. It looks like, given the fact that the probe scouted around this way earlier, uh, that the AI is coded well for this map. It should know that it can't pass through here. Um, <clears throat> but at the moment, we don't quite see that. Maybe it is being taunted a little bit by this Marine here. Meanwhile, we do have a factory coming up with a Vulture first option coming from Xiao Yi. Uh, four gateways coming up, perhaps unsurprising from Stardust. And the Vultures... Is this, is this going to be uh, just a situation where both AI can't get past this? Is that why there is going to be a stalemate? That's gonna, that would be funny, because I've hyped it up as some like this epic clash that would happen. I did look into the scores of both AI to, think, to make sure that it was indeed a game where both AI did something, but now I'm getting concerned. Now, <laughs> now I'm starting to get worried that maybe neither player would be able to leave their base, maybe? I'm going to speed up a little bit just to make sure we have a medic going forward. Oh, the Dragoons, it looks like they're almost decided to do it, but not quite. Uh, the Dragoon count is fairly large, and it would be very problematic for Xiao Yi at this rate. Is this really what's going to happen? I mean, this is going to be funny to watch regardless. I mean, the Dragoon's counts should soon be so great that it won't be able to <laughs> fit them all here in the natural. I mean, the Proto the Terran player is on two bases now. Yeah, the Dragoons just simply can't make it out through this, <laughs> through this hole here. <laughs> Oh boy, I should have expected this uh, on this map. I had so I had a lot of hope when the probe was going this way. Um, we have siege tanks, vultures, wraiths here, and just oh, so many dragoons. I'm really curious to see what. Look at that APM by the way, 88,000, 110 supply of dragoons, no second base coming up, five gateways. Let's see, and the seat. I mean. If, these, the, if this amount of Dragoons, I think it should be able to bust this. We, we also have Marine Medic with... Uh, oh, the Zealots? Oh, here we go, here we go. We're making some progress. I do think that it might have been the Marine Medic that we're throwing off the AI here. So let's let's see what, how this happens. Oh my goodness. Half the army stays back here. Half the army is over here. Marine Medic Micro over here. Taking down some Zealots. Falling, falling back to the Siege Tanks that are on the defensive here. Siege Tanks finally in range of the Dragoons. Wraiths out here, I'm not sure what they're exactly going to accomplish here, maybe just to distract and show high ground uh, for the siege tanks. Cloak even on the way. Uh, now finally recombining with the rest of its army here. I'm so happy that this AI made out, made it out of its own base. Looks like it is going to make the mistake of continuing to try to pressure through this narrow choke though, making 
but it's falling back for now, perhaps recognizing that it can't do anything about this army here, and finally taking its expansion over here. So I'm very happy that we finally have some progress in this regard. The, this wraith peppering these dragoons who are unable to decide which way to go. And actually we have the Terran, who's actually made it out as well, but it's again split its army half and half. Half of its army over here, half of its army. EMP going down, very nicely done by Xiaoyi. Siege tanks slowly funneling out, but this might be a very dangerous situation for it if it continues to send siege tanks one by one out here. Quite a number of dragoons go down, but not enough to defend this third base, but the Protoss doesn't seem very eager to go take it out. It seems more interested in trying to push through here, not understanding that it can't. Finally, the Dragoons coming around, they're going to find this command center here to kill the SCV. Mine's coming up, no observer in sight, and now this is going to be a dangerous position for the Protoss to be so much Goon Soup here. A lot of Dragoons going down, and the Terran, if it makes a counter push, I think it could be quite successful here. Uh, having been on two bases for far longer than its Protoss opponent, the Protoss now officially on only one mining base. Uh, the Terran going up to three. Um, and look at this beautiful base layout, by the way. Depots and tech to the back, factories to the front, even though there is quite a few less than we would probably want. Uh, Dragoons continue to try to pressure up here. Siege tanks going into siege mode uh, at the appropriate distance. And this just highlights how difficult this map can be uh, in a stalemate scenario. The Protoss actually taking this base as well. Bring okay. I want to take a moment to talk about this. So um, instead of usually transferring your probes as soon as your nexus is done, is seen as nearly optimal, right? Uh, in this case, the probes were sent over here uh, and mined a mineral each, and they're going to drop off cargo at this nexus. Uh, so that they immediately start mining. So they already have one round of minerals ready in their hands. Uh, so it's a different way. It's, it's not quite as efficient, but it's a great solution. And it's something that you can easily pull off as an AI because you can, uh, you know the moment that this Nexus is finished, that's when you drop off the cargo and there you see you have it. It looks like that probe may be going to take a fourth base now. Uh, the Dragoon count is quite low now though, uh, here at this base. And the siege tanks, even though they're still struggling to make it out, the marine medic count and the vultures in this choke are going to be enough to repel this, it seems like. As now finally some siege tanks streaming out towards the third base. Now they're going back. No, they can't make a decision. This map, features of this map definitely are not properly accounted for at the moment by the AI. Although now it seems, the, the Protoss at least, seems to be quite handily moving its forces around this way. Still incredibly Dragoon dependent. And as we've seen before from uh, Stardust that... Um, as it continues to be so Dragoon heavy, uh, it eventually will not have enough to fight a large mass of siege tanks and meat shield, which the Terran does at this point have. It has about at least, I would say, 16 tanks here and quite a wealth of marine medics and vultures here. Um, some Valkyries, some, some Wraiths, interesting decisions here. No siege mode, this finally sieging up on this high ground, and it did take its fourth base as well, so we're going into that split map scenario, as I described earlier, aided in part by the difficulties of Pathic. But now we see that even with only a couple of siege tanks here and only a little bit of meat shield, the Dragoons unable to decide how to enter there in a great concave, but they're kind of like stuck in this dance. They decided not to engage, even though they probably could have taken it out with losses, of course. No observers still in sight, interestingly enough, for Stardust. Just pure muscle toss, pure Dragoons. Uh, and I really feel like Xiao Yi, with its, uh, you know, more diverse unit composition, should be able to win here. Look at the supply difference. 190 for Xiao Yi, 120 for Stardust. And finally, we have a decent number of number of tanks making their way forward to this location. Still so many trapped back here, but hopefully as the trickle continues to push, we'll start moving forward and we will be able to see some uh, aggressive aggression past the midpoint from the Terran player because this is the time to push at 192 supply. Oh my goodness, so many Dragoons going down. So brutal here. Uh, siege tanks showing their strength here. And in a split map scenario, I mean, actually, quite interestingly enough, Stardust has taken its uh, the 6 o'clock base here, which is on technically the Terran side, but it's often taken by the Protoss here. Sort of a sneak base. Can't really transfer probes here unless it uses the shuttle, especially now that it's lost the middle. And look at this positioning from Xiaoyi. This is such a difficult position for Protoss to break in this narrow choke uh, where only a single Zealot can pass through at a single time. Siege tanks in range of the Nexus and the probes here. This is a famous, famous tactic used on this map. And now... The uh, one base has officially been, become unusable for Stardust. The Dragoons pull back, all, pull back all the way back into its main base, unable to engage this tightly packed army from the Terran player. The Terran still having most of its army back here, probably about 50, 60 supply of it back there. Uh, but still, this position here is quite enough to hold the Dragoons at bay. 
Uh, interestingly enough, there is a Citadel and a uh, Templar Archives, but only Dragoons continue to be produced, and the Terran player is pressuring just at the front here. This base has come up successfully, it's going to be mined, it's sneakily working for the uh, Protoss player, and we'll see how this goes. If the Protoss player continues to hemorrhage probes and Dragoons here in this position. Uh, are there any more tanks making their way out? Yes, more and more tanks are being added to this position, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be ready to push around or take out any of these bases, despite the fact that they are cut off from reinforcements at the moment by this forward position from the Tyrant player. So let's take it, make it go a little bit quicker now so that we can see what is going to happen next. It looks like we're in another bit of a stalemate situation here as the Terran slowly trickles army out. Protoss being contained in its base by the pressure here. And look at this vortex of units. Oh, they can't fit in all in here. And now finally, using an unfortunate siege timing, it's keep it keeps sieging and unsieging. Oh, the, is it going to lose its position to Dragoon Cap? No, it seems like it might still hold on. It's hard to tell. It keeps sieging and unsieging, allowing the Dragoons to take out some of the meat shield, but again, not being able to pass through this gap is severely damaging the chances of the Protoss player of ever being able to make it out of this base. And we see... Oh, jeez. So, Dragoons still unable to make it out. No Zealots being added, and I feel like this is where all the money is going to be spent for both players. And the slow trickle of units from the Terran player coming out all these tanks trapped in the natural. The Dragoons trapped in the natural here, not being able to leave, and there's going to be an endless battle here as minerals will be depleted on this map eventually at this rate. Let's keep an eye on it. Xiao Yi up, still maxed at 7,000 minerals, but unable to really push into this base because of the features of the map. And this may go on for a while, folks. I'm curious to see how this all ends. I don't want to speed it up much further because I know that it's already kind of clunky. Uh, maybe just just for a little bit, put it up to 8 speed, because we're not really seeing much different here, we're just kind of waiting to see how this stalemate will break. Uh, siege tanks just, like, you know, sieging on sieging, Dragoons running around but not opting for anything, once in a while some units dying, minerals slowly depleting, the map slowly getting mined out, I see that the third is mined out here, the fourth must be coming close as well, the Protoss third is mined out, the Protoss 4th and 5th continuing to mine, and no one having laid claim to the mineral only here at the 9 o'clock position. Uh, probes are running around, I guess, looking for a way, and actually the Terran position here is thinned out quite considerably. Uh, the Stardust is still very low on supply because of its con continuous hemorrhage of Dragoons, its minerals count incredibly low, but if Xiaoyu never manages to push into this location, this could be the reason why we see this draw. Um, Especially, oh my god, there's so much army here. Oh boy. Okay, finally we're seeing some upwards movement from the sea tanks, but no, it looks like they're recommitting to the state act down here. Oh man. This, I feel like this might go on for a while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip forward a bit to see if there's any difference. Is it fast forwarding even? Yeah, it looks like it's, it's, street, it's fast forwarding for us now, because... Hold on. I, I don't know what's happening. I think the UI broke. Oh my god, we've taken a base? Okay. The Terran's going to get richer and richer. Is this going to be how it stalemates? Because I think they're hard. there's a hard cap uh, on the timer. Oh my god, another command center floating here. What is this? Oh god, this is the screenshot, I think, right here that we would want for the video. Uh, yeah, just... <laughs> I guess Blue Storm is the reason for this. And look at the Dragoons actually opting not to take out this video. Alright, we're going to slow it down a little bit now. I think it might be because I'm on fast forward right now. So, like skipping forward to to some part of the game. But Stardust, it looks like it's close to mined out now. I don't think it's going to have the, the minerals to take out all the army. But it is breaking this position here. Lost, so many Dragoons went down. Just two siege tanks, one siege tank, zero siege tanks now in this position. Is this the great pushback? I feel like, I fear though that it, I don't think it's going to matter much given the amount of army that is still back here. No observers, I don't know, there is an observer here, but still manages to lose all those dragoons here. And let's see how this progresses. I am still on fast forward mode apparently, going to the end of this game. Dragoons now clearing mines to get to bases that are fully mined out. The Terran player still mining some minerals here, very few, the dragoons opting to ignore. And I fear that uh, Stardust is going to have a horrible surprise when it gets to this base. This is 
practically an unkillable ball of Tyrant here. You would need Stasis and Storm to bust that, and definitely more unit diversity than Dragoons alone just offer us here. Uh, and this base is still happily mining, quite interestingly enough. Uh, Protoss is officially mined out with only 78 minerals left. It could take this base to make some more money, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like that is in the cards for Stardust at the moment. Uh, no... I mean, Terran is not really producing either, given the fact that it's maxed out at the moment. Uh, looks like it is trying to push back out to take this high ground, maybe reclaim, uh, start continuing to push, but it might seems like it, it would just take too long for it to funnel all of its units out here uh, for uh, a vic decisive victory, despite the fact that it clearly has the capacity to take the W. You have to make sure that you code for the maps. The maps and their pathing is quite important. I can only imagine, it's it's difficult for a human that knows what it has to do to path around this map with larger units like Siege Tanks and Dragoons, so I can only imagine how difficult it is to code for uh, AI, especially as a Terran AI that has almost all of its units, Vulture, Siege Tanks, definitely all of its factory units, which you would most commonly see on this map against, uh, uh, against Protoss, and actually I guess on, on all maps. Um, Anyway, how difficult it is to code for it. It does look like the siege tanks are trying to go, but the vultures aren't really keen on it, and they know that there's a gap here where the Protoss was attacking from before, so they feel maybe motivated to protect it. And uh, it seems like this is how we're going to be approaching this uh, this endgame stalemate. I believe that we might not see much different coming going forward soon, <laughs> so I am going to... Let's see. I can't even pause for some reason, it's quite interesting. Yep, we're going to be dancing around here, and I believe that this is enough to call the stalemate. I think we can all see how this is going to end, and that was a, uh, a stalemate uh, from a AI perspective, how it happens differently from how it happens to humans. Uh, it's stuff like this. Uh, very understandable <laughs> difficulties with pathing on this map. And this is, seems to be like the kind of conflict that will continue until the end of the game. So, without further ado, we are going to move forward to the next game. And this one is, again, going to be Stardust against Xiaoyi. But interestingly enough, this is a map that should have a lot less pathing difficulties. This is Andromeda. Xiaoyi starting at the bottom right as the White Terran. And Stardust starting as the Teal Protoss on the top right. And so let's see how this... Uh, game plays out. I'm really interested now to see what kind of stalemate is going to happen here, given that the last one was largely due to pathing issues. Um, we have. I'm, I'm expecting mostly standard play. I mean, from Xiaoyi, given the way that it played last game, I'm expecting another four gate dragoon from Xiaoyi. But this is a fantastic map to defend against those types of plays. Look at this high ground choke that happens in the natural here. An AI can kill this. Um, I believe it's called a reactor. No, is it a reactor? <clears throat> It's something like that. It's like a supply facility or something. Anyway, you can kill this spot, put siege tanks here, put siege tanks here, have siege tanks here, and this becomes a death knell for any army, especially a Dragoon heavy one, to come in. And given that uh, Xiaoyi uh, definitely played a bit uh, defensive and you know economically oriented in its previous games, I can definitely see it being possible. I think I hear probes going down, actually, from this forward marine. The strategy from Xiaoyu showing its merits here, and now we're already seeing the third gateway coming up, and looks like the no, that's a pylon. I imagine a fourth gateway will be coming up soon as well for Stardust. Um, the bunker is placed for Xiaoyi. Uh, the, the SCVs are in place. Forward vultures coming in as well as the forward marines to kind of stall and delay any aggression. Uh, stalling for that first siege tank, but it is actually going to continue to be vultures here. So this is somewhat of a vulnerable position right now as the Marines all get taken down. It looks like there might be one Marine in that bunker, a few Vultures out front, and but there is enough SCVs to repair at the meantime. Definitely not an optimal opening. Uh, now there is five Dragoons and five SCVs are going to be here, but the Dragoons are standing inside the range of the bunker, quite sloppy here, um, and two Dragoons already down. They're hoping to brute force it. Three Dragoons down now, uh, and now there's officially not enough to take down this base, but the Nexus is up from Stardust a lot earlier than we usually see it, actually. Uh, usually, we, I mean, as, as last game indicated, we saw quite a few uh, Dragoons, like almost 100 supply before the Nexus came up, and in previous games we've seen that as well. But Xiaoyi answering with an expansion of its own quite a bit later, but Siege Tank production has started. And is that, I believe that's a barracks, actually. 
Nope, that is a starport. That's what it is. That makes much more sense. Uh, shall we? Using, uh, going to be making those uh, vulture. I'm sorry, uh, wraiths again, like we saw in last game. The siege tank looks like it doesn't have siege mode yet. Uh, this is an ample situation where the where a human player would run by, take out the siege tank, and run up the ramp and cause chaos. It looks like there was a run in attempt to take out the siege tank, but repairing SCVs were over there, and now we're going to be entering that position in the game where the high ground siege tanks are going to be absolutely brutal for a Dra uh, Dragoon Heavy Protoss. Dra Running in here, taking out the siege tank, nice, but is it worth the cost? Lost four Dragoons in that engagement. Keeping the siege tank count low is not a bad move, and now we're continuing to run in uh, using the opportunity of the siege tank timing gap uh, in the uh, production and positioning of Xiaoyi, but uh, now I believe it is going to be holding firm here. Uh, more gateways being added, but up to six gateways coming up now for... Uh, I'm sorry, for Stardust, and it looks like it will be taking its third base at the other main. Quite standard play here on this map for uh, Stardust. Um, meanwhile, Xiaoyu, a lot of economy has been lost on keeping SCVs here ready to repair. Marine Medic is now out, and this another siege tank goes down. This is a dangerous situation. Again, a run by here would be absolutely brutal, but with the amount of SCVs here, they're blocking the ramp, they're repairing the bunker. The bunker isn't going to stay up. It's almost down. Siege, only one siege tank in the back, and now the Dragoon Count has officially fallen to the point where the bunker bust is not going to go through. Xiaoyu barely holding on its natural. Now with a second siege tank. Uh, and is going to stay on the high ground with that second siege tank. A good choice here. And with, now with two siege tanks here, I believe that is going to be too difficult for uh, Stardust to make any advances. Producing a lot of cannons, interestingly enough. Probably aware of the fact that Starport is up. Aware of the vultures. And again running in to try to take out the siege tank. It does get repaired and blocked by the Marines, Medics, and SCVs here at the entrance. Uh, Wraith now out as we expected. Uh, keeping tabs on the army but staying out of range. No, 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 it gets picked off. Marine Medic's kind of inching forward a little bit too greedily. A fourth base now on the way for Stardust as well. Um, who continues to hammerage units little by little, but the sea, like especially what I'm concerned about is the fact that the siege tank count has not risen above three in a while now that we're, we're finally at it. Looks like it is adding a factory down here, interesting enough, or is that a barracks? I think the, this is the factory, this is the barracks. So it is going to be Marine Medic, which is quite an interesting choice. Marine Medic with Vulture and Tank and Wraith support. But actually the Dragoon count is not that high for Sardis as well. It does have a supply lead of about 30, which is quite normal. But both armies have been trading consistently in the early game, and now these trades are looking worse and worse for Stardust. Uh, as we've seen before, the pure Dragoon production, not that great against a more uh, mixed composition, but there is still not quite enough tanks to be posing a danger to this number of Dragoons. Uh, the Dragoons, however, are making the job a little easy, running into this Death Knell, trying to take out some Siege tanks, but they are all getting repaired. So many Dragoons have fallen down. And now Stardust is moving out uh, slowly but surely, claiming more territory. The siege tank is still not eager to move out, but the mines are going to help a lot. There is an observer with the Dragoons this time, so this seems to be a much cleaner game from the players here. And look at the amount of gateways we have here. Still pure Dragoon production, but now already on four bases. And Stardust, I'm sorry, uh, Xiao Yi still has not had a real chance to move out and breathe, uh, given the, all these trades that's happened. Oh, big mine shot! Uh, siege tank on the high ground, worth its weight in gold here, and as the Vulture and Siege tank count now rise, is rising, it, it looks like Xiao Yi decides that this is the critical moment where it has to move out. Let's see how the Siege tanks push forward, still taking out a lot of Dragoons, but Dragoon count is quite high, production is very high as well. The Dragoons, Dragoon soup is officially here, and now it's there's a lot less meat shield for the Siege tanks, but because the Dragoon count has thinned out, it, they can't seem to engage against this almost pure Siege tank army. There is some Vulture support. Beautiful moving forward from the siege tanks. The Dragoons trying to get right on top of the tanks, but do fall down for in exchange for a couple of tanks. The Dragoon count is quite large, though. I believe that Terran might be well. Uh, might you know it would be a good time to wait for a few reinforcements at this position. Uh, Terran taking its third base now at its mineral only. Interestingly enough, uh, low, I'm sorry, uh, Stardust already on five bases here. The Dragoons continue to try to pressure against the tanks, and I feel like its insistence on producing only Dragoons is going to really, really hurt it here. Uh, zealots in this situation would have been really useful. EMP falling on the Dragoons. The Dragoons trying to step on top of the tanks. There's only four of them left here, actually, and the Dragoon production is quite great. Five tanks now against about ten Dragoons here. Two of them trapped in this base, unfortunately. A pylon here would have fixed that. And the Dragoons now are finally pushing back against this Terran army. Uh, 
useless Valkyries in this composition. Uh, Vessel is not going to do much, and one Siege Tank left here. Protected by Mines, admittedly. The Mines do explode and take out some Dragoons, and the Retreat is now on for Xiaoyi. Unfortunately, unable to claim really much territory. It would have been a good pickup to take this base. Uh, the Mines being cleared up effortlessly by the Protoss player. And, uh, yeah, so five base Protoss against three base Terran. Uh, quite a common situation that we see in this matchup in Brood War. Uh, but with its siege tank count heavily depleted and being on only two gas instead of three gas, which is more common, uh, Xiaoyu is kind of in a rough pickle. I mean, 50 supply difference, also not too abnormal, but, oh, this, oh my god, this is the death knell I was talking about earlier. Look at how many Dragoons fell here. Absolutely absurd. It seems that Stardust, despite, you know, having great awareness of the map in this case, you know, being able to expand and take a lot of economy, um, 75 workers, which is basically the ideal count for this matchup, uh, unable to push into the base of Xiaoyu simply due to a lack of build diversity, a lack of army diversity. It does have the fantastic production here. It does have quite a few gateways. Look at that. 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19 gateways, which is a good count for this situation. Maybe closer to 20 something would be better. And by the way, a lot of Dragoons died, but again, a fair trade in terms of how many siege tanks it took down. Siege tanks being, of course, the greatest threat to this Dragoon heavy army. Uh, and keeping the numbers low keeps the Dragoons viable uh, when they're in solitary numbers. Here, they, I believe they could be able to clear out all the tanks again. Uh, this kind of tug of war is continuing, going to continue to happen as it seems that Stardust, look at the production, just Dragoon, 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 Dragoon. It's going to continue to try to push into this defensive position of Xiaoyi. Xiaoyi will eventually run out of money first, but Stardust is definitely burning more minerals on these aggressive ventures as well. Just two siege tanks now, but so many mines here as well, taking out so many Dragoons, and again, Stardust uh, kind of whip burns out before it's able to actually penetrate the defenses of Xiaoyi. Uh, Xiaoyi barely holding on. More Dragoon reinforcements coming in. The bunker doing its work. The high ground tanks as well. Mines being laid defensively here and all the Dragoons have finally fallen again. The ne next wave of reinforcements entering and it seems like unlike many human stalemates the where the stalemate is because both uh, opponents realize that you know it's impossible for me to go in and and win at this position. So when it, it's basically a situation where both players can't recognizing that they can't win. In this case, we have I believe uh, Stardust not recognizing that it can win if it just changes the strategy a bit. So they just keep engaging over and over and over in the same battles over and over and over. Uh, mines have already been laid by uh, Xiaoyi's at some point during this, which is a really nice play because it does look like Stardust was interested in taking those bases. Uh, n still not taking the mineral onlys or this base. This vulture maybe has prevented that as well. The mineral, uh, the middle base still up for the taking. And I mean, this tug of war looks like it's slated to continue here in the middle as uh, more and more Dragoons go down. Uh, as the Dragoon production does not cease, uh, only the occasional observer or so. Meanwhile, it's still the same composition for Xiao Yi. Uh, minerals should be running low soon, though. I mean, the main and that are mined out. We only have the third base mining. While a uh, very healthy economy for uh, Stardust, still on. Well, actually, only about one and a half bases. If it doesn't take out, if it doesn't take these bases, there could be, and as I was speaking, it looks like there was a dangerous situation here. There's no Marines in this bunker. It seems like finally Marines being made, uh, and there is a very low siege tank count here. Uh, both players very low on minerals. Supply difference is now really big. Uh, is it going to be able to penetrate here with the amount of siege tanks? I wonder if, um, given the uh, lack of production from Stardust, I wonder how it would fare in a situation where the Terran player lifts a, a building and flies to the island. I think that might be a good way to forestall some games. Uh, looks like, again, just enough to hold off uh, uh, Stardust here. And this base is actually quite useless now. I mean, it does need the gas, even from a depleted geyser, to continue siege tank production, which are so crucial for holding off these Dragoons. But, uh, it it does not have any minerals here itself, and it is still causing Stardust to hemorrhage quite a bit of money on its own. Uh, and I, I, as I wanted to say earlier, it would be quite a mistake here if it can't uh, figure out to take this island. And actually, I mean, I'm surprised now. I mean, we're 25 minutes in, and it looks like Stardust may be finally able to break into this base from Xiaoyi. I wonder how this game stalls out. There's quite a number of Dragoons here. 150 supply. Dragoon production continuing. Interesting. Uh, I don't know what's happening here, but the Dragoons are now firmly inside Xiaoyu's base, and there are only two siege tanks, and they run into the range of the Dragoons, 
both of them look like they're about to get picked off, and they do. Uh, and how is uh, how shall you gonna stay alive here? I'm quite curious because this doesn't seem like it would be a situation where a stalemate should be feasible. Uh, Stardust managed to brute force its way in after hundreds of lost dragoons, and uh, yeah, so I'm curious to see how this uh, how this all ends. I'm gonna speed it up a bit to, to figure it out. Maybe it does indeed do the floating building trick to uh, keep itself alive. Because uh, the replay was listed as being an hour long. Oh my goodness, is it going to be this depot? It, it can't possibly, can it? It can't possibly. I mean, that's the only thing I can see. The Dragoons look like they're looking for... Uh, for the location. Uh, I mean, it did take this middle of the base. They're searching. They're they're searching far and wide for this uh, for this depot. This is how this game ends. This is the, the AI stalemate here. It's very different from our last one. <laughs> what a turn of events, huh? It was right here. It was just must have been just out of sight. And yeah, that seems like that will do it uh, for this game. I mean, dragoons are uh, they're doing a little uh, stacking here unable to figure out what's going on 200 supply minerals continue to grow but no way no uh no realization that it hasn't won yet that it needs to find uh this depot let's i mean it has 30 minutes to find this depot but i'm starting to suspect that it might not let's let's speed up a little bit and keep an eye on the mini map here as well to see what the army movements are it's kind of like if you what your AI does in a null situation, look, it's it's interesting to see how it is moving its army when there is really no stimulus being thrown into the situation. I'm just looking in this little corner here. Army is just seems randomly to be like moving around, like not really sure what to do. Kind of like in clusters as well. Oh my goodness, it ventured in here, but can't find the enemy. Uh, and I think we're going to cut it here. We're not going to <laughs> spend a, f a few more minutes watching uh, this. Shall we steal another draw from Stardust? So, anyway, uh, like I said, those games were from StarCraft AI Competition COG uh, 2020. Uh, I invite you to check out the replays yourself. I'll be posting a link in the description and uh, you can check out the replays here and then based on the detailed results here so as you can see I sorted by duration I was looking for those one hour stalemate games and trying to figure out what happened I might look into a couple of more of them uh, when I'm offline interestingly uh, let me see let me turn off all bots there we go mm. let's see anyway what I'm saying is uh, I'm going to be looking into these uh, nod casted. Like I'm going to be looking to find some interesting ones. Uh, and uh, by the way, I do notice that there's quite a lot of Xiao Yi here, which is interesting to note. A lot of games that are at the one hour mark. And uh, if you guys thought that the, these stalemate in games were interesting, I'm sure we'll find many different scenarios that force stalemates between the two AIs. And that is what I'll be looking into uh, for our next broadcast. See if there's one more or two more that have uh, any interesting, uh, any other interesting outcomes. If you guys have any replays that you would like to see, or types of games that you would like to see, perhaps more uh, SCAI versus humans, or more of the recommended replays from our Discord, I suggest that you make a comment in the description and let us know. Um, without further ado, this has been Chobo Swackens, aka jealous from team liquid and uh i want to thank you all for tuning in i hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh stay tuned we'll be back next week with another sscait report take care